Mad Pyramid TV coming to you from St. Peter's Basilica where the canonization of John Henry Newman has just wound up. I'm sure I'm not the only one who just feels like this entire uh, process has been more or less downgraded because of the, the changes that they've made to the process of canonization, the devil's advocate having been removed, uh, reducing the number of miracles and all the rest. This is in no, in no way suggests that John Henry Newman isn't deserving of being canonized as saint. It's just that it's kind of sad when uh, there's so much suspicion about the process now that even when they get it right, which I think in this case they, they did get it right, uh, you just don't have the same sense of joy or jubilation of politicizing them. They certainly have been using the process to canonize the revolution of Vatican II by making every pope so far uh, who's passed away a saint. Uh, the pope who were, popes who were involved with the Second Vatican Council. And just in general, the Catholic Church used to be so much more dis discerning. She took more time. She had more credibility. Uh, she didn't rush, for example, to declare everything, that, everything, every nice thing that happened at Lourdes in France as a miracle. And she was always respected for that. And it was the same with the canonization process. It took a long time. It took 400 years for St. Thomas More to be canonized. So. It's just another example of what they're doing to the church here, where in the past, when someone was canonized, certainly in the, in the past 1,000 years, when someone was canonized, it was really a big deal. And there was faith and confidence in the process. But just like so many Catholics have lost faith in the process of the whole conciliar process of doing a lot of things, including liturgy and doctrine and everything else, um, synods, you have this sort of sad feeling like, what have they done to our church? What have they done to the process of canonization? How is this going to be repaired? How do they fix the credibility problem that they have with canonization when they've just uh, sort of made a mockery out of it, you know, made it into a saint making factory here? And uh, just one has one has the, the sense or the, the, uh, the feeling that um, it just isn't the same, you know? So we're, we're, we're trying to be celebrating. We're trying to celebrate what's happening. Uh, to John Henry Newman, of course, who was a great saint, whose book on consulting the laity in matters of doctrine is one of, is certainly very applicable to our own time, uh, with lay people having to step up and fight. Uh, so I'm not in any sense trying to to uh, suggest that John Henry Newman isn't deserving of this, and I hope and pray that you know one day the process will be restored. In the meantime, Saint John Henry Newman, pray for us. Uh, but again, just um, the whole Vatican II thing has cast a shadow, cast a pall over everything, even this glorious and magnificent place that now seems to be the center, not of Christendom, but the center of international intrigue and corruption and bank scandals and apostasy and heresy and everything else. Very sad. On the other hand, this is a glorious day. This is Rome. The church will come back. We know the church will be restored. Uh, it's just a matter of a matter of time and God's good time. And we need to do our part to do whatever we can to help restore Mother Church, the church that we all uh, love so much. So again, thanks very much for listening here from Rome at the uh, canonization of John Henry Newman. I'm Michael Matt from Running TV and we'll see you tomorrow. Oh,
Yeah. 